The time has come. Handhelds are slowly but surely moving closer and closer to the ever restricted environment of cloud gaming. I have reviewed devices that can play most of your retro games for just $60, to complete powerhouses that can run AAA games at high frame rates for well over $1,000. This has given me an insight into where the handheld industry is and where it's heading. Logitech are one of the first to dip their toes into cloud gaming handhelds, even when I think we'll look back in years to come and say, it's a bit early for that, isn't it? So without further ado, here is our full review of the Logitech G Cloud. Straight out of the box, you can tell that a company with a bit of money has designed this. The box is very well made and the packaging incredibly simple. You're given nothing but a handheld, a charging cable and a manual. In the hands, it's just as incredible and because it relies on the cloud, it doesn't need to pack itself full with large internals that makes it look like King Kong's big toe. It's a slim, ergonomic handheld with thick grips that give you control and a slim middle that makes it feel sleek compared to some of its bigger competitors like the a &Neo Air, which like to claim their handhelds are thin. But this here truly is a thin device, on par with the Nintendo Switch, not including the grips that is. It's not heavy either, coming in at just 463 grams, making it lighter than your typical bottle of fizzy drink. And when packed with a large 7 inch 1080p display, it feels as if you're not really holding all of this tech. But again, that's one of the benefits of cloud gaming handhelds. It can pack a lot into such a small device. The Logitech G Cloud handheld has a very rounded aesthetic, from the grips, to the screen edges, to the buttons. Everything is rounded to give it that fun, modern look that Logitech are trying to perceive. The front facing action buttons are bouncy and again rounded which make them comfortable to press. The analog sticks raise quite high out of the shell, something I usually moan about with typical handhelds, but for obvious reasons this is a device that stays in your home, so there will be no frequent snagging of these sticks when you put it into your bag or pull it out of your pockets as if you really want to put this in your pockets. The D-pad is nothing to shout about. Because of its rounded nature and soft touch pads, you get very little feedback when switching directions, meaning for all of you that love fighting games, you'll likely hate this D-pad. Logitech has added a nice array of extra buttons, from the G button, which takes you directly into app settings, to the home button, which brings you back into the custom-made Android menu. Both of these are obvious and can be easily pressed. The start and select buttons are also very unique and have tiny bumps to them, which is something I haven't seen on a handheld before. On top, you have your stacked shoulder buttons, which are again nothing to shout about and unfortunately these because of the L2 and R2 buttons are that small I found my fingers slipping off them a lot because they don't flare enough at the back but again this is pretty much personal preference because that's the type of shoulder buttons I dig. Between them you'll find your on off slider, volume buttons and an SD card slot for adding extra storage for all of your Android things. Then finally on the bottom you'll find a USB-C port for charging and a headphone jack. It's a simple looking device that has been well designed to give it a fun, youthful look with a little splash of colour and a large screen that pulls you into the cloud gaming experience. The screen is a great size, coming in at 7 inches, anything larger and you'll be moving beyond portable in my personal opinion. It's a 1080p display that can get very bright and shows a nice variation of saturated colours, but because of the streaming nature of this handheld, you don't really push the screen to its full potential, especially if you don't have a strong internal internet connection to pull in great quality graphics that you would typically get when you're playing locally or with a solid GPU. However, that said, the menus and the Android applications and even emulation for that matter does look good on this thing and in all honesty, a 1080p resolution is all you need in something of this size. 
Now, let me take you through the user interface of the G Cloud handheld. Once you're set up, you'll be greeted with this clean open menu designed specifically for this handheld. It's technically running on Android 11, but most of the time it doesn't really feel like it. Logitech has designed the UI so efficiently that it feels like a completely new operating system just with the same capabilities of downloading your Android apps. These apps simply drop into your homepage and can be easily organized and could even appeal to gamers who have never used an Android device before. It's literally that easy to set up. The OS makes it easy to jump into cloud gaming too through the applications. I found myself primarily using this device for Xbox cloud gaming, retro gaming emulators, and the odd large Android game. Again, because it uses Android, it opens up the possibility to use this gaming device for more than just gaming. Perhaps you want to watch YouTube videos, read emails, or browse the web. You can because of the touchscreen. Android games worked pretty well on this thing, and that's thanks to the Snapdragon 720 processor. For example, large games like Diablo Immortal worked flawlessly at 30 frames per second on high settings, and combined with the large screen, it made the gaming experience far more comfortable than a typical smartphone or tablet. But that said, some games like Call of Duty on mobile, or I think they call it Call of Duty mobile nowadays, just won't connect with the integrated controls. And it forces you to play with on-screen controls, which isn't really Logitech's fault. It's actually the developers who made it, so Activision. So do double check what Android games you're wanting to play on this thing before you end up snagging one. But that's not what you buy this for. The Logitech G Cloud is for those that want to stream their gaming collection effortlessly while they are on their sofa, they're at a friend's house, or even in the garden. And that it does very well. I spent countless hours playing through my Xbox collection within seconds of getting it out the box. There's no downloading the game, no installing updates, or even syncing your accounts. With one press, you're playing the game without hesitation. And that's where the magic is with cloud gaming. It's just very, very easy. Obviously, it comes with its benefits and its disadvantages in regards to ownership and performance. I could make a whole separate video on why cloud gaming isn't for everyone, but if you're here watching this video, I presume you already know that. So I want to keep this video all about the product. When testing the gaming experience throughout the console, it was quite literally flawless. Games loaded fast through Xbox app, they played very well with little connectivity issues, and even though the graphics didn't blow me away, it was still a pleasant and silky smooth experience that surprised me. At times, I did notice some latency issues, but that was resolved the closer I got to my router. So this cements that you do need a fast internet connection to get a good experience out of these types of devices. I'm actually disappointed that Logitech didn't use Wi-Fi 6 inside. Instead, they've gone with the old Wi-Fi 5. Not that it makes a major difference, but they could have done better here. Typically, with other handheld PCs I have reviewed, the setup process takes hours, but this quite literally took me minutes, if not seconds, from pressing the on button. And as a reviewer of handhelds, I know this will entice many average consumers and gamers that don't want to deal with the headache of setting up their device. I guess you could say this kind of meets gamers in the middle, so to speak. Yes, the initial $349 is expensive compared to others on the market, but for a small monthly fee, you do get access to an incredible collection of games in the cloud. And as much as I am personally a gamer who, let's say, wants to keep everything local, this experience through Xbox Cloud and Steam Link has impressed me. The battery life is also incredibly impressive. Inside this handheld, you have a 6,000 milliamp battery. And from testing, I was pulling in about nine hours of battery life on 100% brightness and 80% volume. But I even pushed it to around 12 hours of gameplay at 50% brightness and max volume, which in a device of this size, is very, very impressive. And it's a device that I can pick up knowing that I'm gonna play it all day at home without having to charge it. For those wanting to do more native gaming on the handheld, Android does allow you to install some of your favorite emulators. So I have been putting this thing through the test and trying to see what it does and doesn't emulate. 
because of the internal specs. Your classic 8-bit and 16-bit games will run incredibly well on here, so I'm just going to jump straight to the juicy stuff. Firstly, I went in and tested the PSP with God of War being one of the hardest games to emulate. I was happy to see that it ran very, very well, with the ability to scale up to 2x resolution with no quality sacrifice. It was also nice to use the entire screen real estate too. I then tried Dreamcast, something that handhelds half the price can emulate, but I had to start somewhere. And after playing around with Crazy Taxi and Sonic Adventure, again, I was glad to see that it ran very well, with easy to set up controls and zero hiccups. Next up is Nintendo Wii, and one feature which surprised me was the fact that not only did it work well running Dolphin, it automatically knew that the device here had tilt functions. So when I was in game and it required me to shake or tilt the Wiimote, I simply used the G Cloud here to emulate those motions and it actually worked. I then moved to PlayStation 2 and loaded up one of the largest games possible, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Typically, I have to tinker with these settings to get the game running efficiently, but to my surprise, it ran well on the first boot with no frame rate issues nor audio glitches. Then finally, the limit for the device was GameCube emulation, which I wouldn't think that because it ran PlayStation 2 well, but hey, you can't win them all. GameCube ran very poorly, even after tinkering with the settings for a couple of hours. Yes, you can kind of get some games running well, but large games like Simpsons Hit and Run was basically its limit. And for $349, I was honestly expecting GameCube emulation, but at the same time, I was then surprised at the PS2 performance. Beyond PS2 emulation, even PCs struggle with, so it's nice to know that this can run most retro games, but I think you have to see this as a bonus when you buy this type of device. This is a handheld aim at those that want to take full advantage of Xbox Cloud Gaming, Steam Link and Android games. It's all wrapped up in a friendly, easy to use, semi-powerful handheld that, be that can be given to all types of gamers. But where I am confused the most is where it's positioned in the market. This device here is quite literally competing with everything. It has no real unique selling point. It competes with the Switch, the Steam Deck, handheld emulators, Android smartphones, tablets, and even handheld PCs. And because it's priced at $349, there's other more powerful choices like the Steam Deck for just $50 more. And if you want a handheld that can play PS2 games, the A and Odin is over $100 cheaper. If you want an Android gaming device or to take advantage of Xbox Cloud Gaming, it's likely you can just buy a new controller for your phone for under $100. It's a solid device, don't get me wrong. I've had a blast with it and the build quality is superb, but I feel like many don't want to splash out on a purely cloud gaming device when they can test the market for far cheaper or go all out on something like the Steam Deck. This needs to be $200 to really succeed in a fast-paced market that is becoming very oversaturated with choice, especially in a time when everyone is low on cash because of the economy. I have respect for Logitech for giving it a go. It's likely I will continue using this to play my Xbox games and large Android games on my sofa. But at this moment in time, the competition is the biggest threat to this handheld. Even if I do think cloud gaming handhelds will slowly but surely take up a lot of the market over the next coming years. So there you have it, our quick review of the Logitech G Cloud. If you wanna see this in written form, hit over, head over, head over to retrododo.com and subscribe if you want to see even more handheld reviews. Catch you in the next one. Peace.